Hi guys, welcome back to the next part of the series. Today we're going to start with the poly modeling and uh, this is probably one of my favorite chapters or at least it's one that I have a lot of fun teaching because we're actually going to be doing props that we could find inside of a game or a commercial or a film. And today we're going to start with this very cool one which is a hammer. A sort of like stylized hammer, this one right here. This is going to teach us a lot of the like basic things that we need to understand about poly modeling. And even though we will not be texturing it in this chapter, we will eventually texture it and give it this sort of like rock texture to make it look really, really, really cool. So yeah, let's get to it. We're going to jump straight into a new scene here inside of Maya. And the first thing we need to do is we need to bring this hammer into one of the views and we need to decide which view it is going to be. Now, when you model, it doesn't really matter which view you model in, but it does matter which uh, view you use at the end to export to an engine or something like that. So we're going to be modeling from the front view. Actually, let's go right view. We're going to be modeling from the right view. So spacebar, click on Maya, right view. And, um, and this is usually the way we want things to be because we always want the elements to be pointing towards the front. So I'm going to go view, image plane, import image, or you can click this little button right here, which is a, sh a shortcut to image planes. And we're going to select our hammer concept art right here. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, something like this. It doesn't have to be extremely big. And I'm going to move this thing so that we can center it or get it as close as possible to the center line right here. There we go. Now, as you can see, this model is made out of multiple components. And this is one of the like main things that I like to teach. We can make really, really cool looking things by mixing and matching the different elements that we have on our, on our, on our assets. What do I mean by this? Well, since this thing is made out of multiple pieces, that means that we can make it out of multiple geometries. We don't have to model one thing from a cube and make sure that everything falls into place. One very cool rule of thumb that I like to use is if you see different materials being used, for instance, this leather right here, we have this like wood or I don't know, it could be leather as well over here, metal and rock. If it's a different material, you probably want to have a different, um, a different geometry as well. Now, when we decide where to start, I usually like to start in this particular exercise with easy pieces. So for instance, we got this one right here, the base of the hammer. Now, in a very similar fashion, I'm going to move this thing lower a little bit so that the corners are on the ground. That means that the perspective is going to be right there. I'm going to create a new cylinder. Control A is the shortcut to open the attribute editor. We can go to the channel box and we're going to change the subdivisions to six because we want to have this or like one, two, three, four, five, six divisions. There we go. Now you can see that we need to rotate this thing probably like 30 degrees. I think 30 degrees is the, is the number here. Let's go to the perspective view and just make sure that, yeah, as you can see, we got like a very symmetrical piece right there. We go back to right view. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a couple of subdivisions, very similar to what we did with the barrel. So I'm going to go subdivisions height and let's do like uh, four, five. Let's do five. Now I'm going to scale this up until the top part meets the proper size. We're going to position it right there. And then I'm going to grab the vertex. This guy's right here. I'm going to scale them up until we meet the side on the bottom. Now you can see that we're not matching the concept perfectly. This is very, very common when we're uh, following a, a picture because this picture right here is just a concept piece. So some of the perspective things might not be perfect. And other uh, the other thing is this is not like an orthographic, like uh, engineering thing. So we just need to capture the general shape of the whole thing. So I'm going to start scaling these things around to generate like the curvature that we have right here. I'm going to actually push this in a little bit to create a nice little curvature right there. And um, I think I'm going to grab the whole object, right click, go to object mode, just make it a little bit thinner. There we go. Something like that. Perfect. So now if we take a look at the perspective, you can see that we got something that looks really, really cool. I'm going to push this image to the back. I usually like having my image planes here on the back side of the elements. And uh, we've used or we just created a primitive with a couple of uh, components, in this case, the edge loops to create the base for this hammer. But if we take a closer look at this thing, you're going to notice that all of the edges are a little bit rounded, right? Well, here's where the bevel comes into play. So I'm going to grab this top edge right here, this top or bottom edge right here. But then I'm going to shift and double click this edge right here. See, because I do want to grab the inner border of the thing. Some of you might be wondering, well, why, why wouldn't we just grab everything and then eliminate this once with control? You can also, <laughs> oh, sorry, you can also do that. That's a perfectly valid option. I remember my teachers used to tell me, 
that um, there's multiple ways to get to the same point here inside of Maya. And you can like, just select everything and then control double click on this edge loops to deselect them. Now, I also want to deselect the top part and the bottom part so that we only have like the borders of the thing. Now that we have this, we can hit bevel and this is going to give us a nice bevel. I'm going to give this two segments again to get rid of the triangles that we normally get when we have only one segment. I'm going to bring the fraction down. Remember that you can press control when doing this to get a little bit more control on the slider, like the invisible slider that we have right here. I'm going to have it right around there. And there we go. So now if I press number three, as you can see, we get this very, very nice, like flat surface effect. So that's it. That's the first part. Now, once I'm finished with a part, if I want to keep my work clean, one of the things that I need to do is I need to center the pivot point, delete history and freeze transformation. So all of these things are clean. And it's a good thing to change the name to something like hammer pommel, which is the base of the hammer. Perfect. Now let's go to the right view again and let's go to the next part, which is this thing right here. You might be wondering, well, how are we going to do this? It's, it's always important when we're looking at a complex shape to try to break it down into its simple elements. So what is the simplest things that we see right here? It's a cylinder, right? So let's start with a cylinder. Let's start with a very basic cylinder right here. Make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. So it goes into the hammer and a little bit into the pummel. It doesn't have to go all the way through. This is a very important rule about modeling. If you don't see it or if it's not going to be seen, you don't need to model it. So if we're not going to see this, like the insides of this hammer at any point of the animation or whatever, we really don't need to, to do it right there. So that's it. <laughs> that's all I need. The only problem with this, um, with this uh, like handler right here is if I press number three, you can see that the caps of the element are going to get a really weird result. And this is because of the of the subdivision, uh, Cadmus Clark subdivision that we've talked about. There's a vertex on the center, there's a vertex on the border, and then the next vertex is all the way over here. So when I do number three, it tries to calculate all those things right there. A couple of options. First of all, we could, of course, bevel this. But in this particular case, it's an even easier option. If I go to the vertex of this guy, select the top vertex and press control F11, we can delete the faces. And when you don't have an extra vertex there, when you do number three, which is uh, like smooth mode, you're going to see that we don't have that same uh, effect. Let me turn the corner real quick. Forgot to turn it. There we go. Now, this button right here is one of my favorite options inside of the Maya viewport. It's called isolate select. So you can see that I want to do the exact same thing on the bottom, like faces, which are right there, but they're a little bit hidden. So instead of having to move this thing, erase them and then bring them back, if I select the object and I click this little button right here, I'm going to go into something called isolation mode, isolate select. So now I can work on this thing without being bothered by any of the other elements. You can select multiple elements as well to get into this specific area. I'm going to grab vertex, control F11, and we delete this one. And there we go. So now this is an empty cylinder that, as you can see, is going to serve the function of um, of being the place where we're going to be positioning all of this like leather straps. So how are we going to create this leather, leather straps? Well, some of you might be tempted to go to this tool right here, which is called the sweep mesh. It could be useful, but not in this particular case. We're actually going to be using, if we go to create polygon primitives, we got this thing called the helix. So I'm going to create a helix. And as you can see, a helix is nothing more than a coil, coil thingy. And uh, we're going to be using this one. So first thing I'm going to do is on the subdivision axis, you can see it's an eight sided helix. We're going to bring the subdivision axis down to four. Then we're going to change the twist. Uh, where is it? So not the coil. We want to change the twist a little bit so that it twists and goes flat against the um, What's the word against the, the surface? We're definitely, we need to count how many of this we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, something like five coils. So let's go here on coils and say five. We definitely want this to be a lot longer. There we go. Width, we definitely need the width to be a little bit bigger. So we are actually like holding the whole thing. Radius, we also want to change the radius here. I'm actually going to go here. I'm going to go up a couple of subdivision levels and I'm going to explain why in just a second. I'm going to go to like eight again, because as you can see, we don't have an option to right, rotate around the, the elements of the of the um, of this leather thing. So we're going to go over there. Definitely need to increase the height a little bit more. We can probably increase the coils a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more radius. 
There we go. So as you can see, that looks a little bit better, or at least closer. And, uh, and we can work with this. So I'm going to isolate this, and I'm going to show you how we can simplify uh, this element so that we get a flat effect, which is what we want. So I'm going to select these two faces, the top face and the bottom face, and I'm going to delete them. And then I'm going to go to edge mode, and I'm going to delete uh, this edge right here. As you can see, it goes across the, the side, the, the back side. I'm going to hit Control and delete. Very important, you do not just delete it, because if you delete it, you can see we are we keep the vertex right there, and we don't want to do that. We're going to say Control and delete. That will delete the edge and the vertex, and we're going to have this flat surface right here. Now, this is where the magic happens. I'm going to select this face and then shift select the next face. And as you guys know, we're going to be selecting this whole thing right here, like the outer edge. We're going to shift and select everything else and delete. And look at what we get. We get a nice spiral that goes around the element in the way that we want. Okay. Now, the only thing we need to do here is we need to do an extrusion and probably push this out a little bit. Look at that. Beautiful. Now to get uh, like the extra layer, because you can see there's like multiple layers there, that's fairly easy. We just control D, scale this a little bit and just push it up, right? Something like this. We create a little bit of overlap and this gives us two different elements. But before I do that, I actually wanna go back to this piece right here, isolate, select again. I'm gonna uh, select this one, this one, the lower one, like this. Very important that we select this ones right here, the ones that create the, the um, extrusion. And once we do that, we can bevel them. Again, two segments and a small fraction. Of course, it's going to be quite a bit of geometry. We're going with uh, with high numbers of, of geometry because this is a, a really uh, curved element. Whenever we have curved elements, there's always going to be a, an increase on, on, on this sort of stuff. For some reason, I have five options right there. Let me change this to... Let's change this to two segments. And something like, there we go. Delete history will make it uh, work a little bit faster. And that's it. So now we have this thing. And again, it's a really dense uh, thing, but it's completely normal. It's okay to have dense meshes every now and then. This is not something that we would be able to use on a game, um, but it's, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a bad um, element. So, one option that we have, is, as I mentioned previously, is just to duplicate this thing, like maybe make it a little bit shorter, scale it in, and just play around with the sort of like overlap that we get. So you can see that makes it look really, really, really cool. But I want to hide this corners a little bit more. So I'm going to show you a new tool here before we finish this first video. Uh, I'm going to select the faces that we have right here, and I'm going to press the letter B on my keyboard. And as you can see, what's going to happen is everything is going to turn on into this sort of like gradient color. Now, if yours looks a little bit different, because right now, as you can see, mine is only grabbing this corner right here. If yours looks a little bit different, you're going to have to go to move brush. And here on the soft selection, I changed mine to surface. I think by default, it's set to uh, volume. So as you can see, it's going to look a little bit more like this, but I'm going to change mine to surface. Soft selection is the way in which we can, as the name implies, move something and, and modify other elements that we're not actually selecting based on this gradient. So if I move this thing down, as you can see right here, I can move it all the way down to create a really nice and clean overlap on this part, hide where this thing ends, and generate something that looks really cool. I could, for instance, select uh, this face right here and do the same thing. I could just like move it down a little bit and create a little bit of overlap on this area, and then I could grab this guy right here, push it up or push it down, so it's very, very cool. Now, if we want to modify the gradient, for instance, let's say we go to, to this faces on the top right here, and we want to affect more than just this part right here, I can press B and then middle mouse drag and change the size of the influence of our element, okay? So if I increase the influence, as you can see, when I move this thing, all of the points are going to be moving. This works for rotation as well. So as you can see, if I rotate here, all of the things are going to try to rotate as well. And this is a really like nice organic way to modify certain things that uh, might not be easy to just like do it manually other way. Now, these overlaps that we're creating here, some people get too like worried about those. They're not the end of the, of the world. Like it's, it's fine to have overlaps every now and then, especially on an object like this, which is not gonna move. But later on, we'll talk about how to uh, fix those as well. 
Now, I'm going to grab this guy right here. And also, I want to bring the, the influence down a little bit. I want to push all of it. And I do want to, like, move this around. There we go. So it kind of, like, goes into the into the top part of the hammer. For instance, here, we can push this one. And this is an excellent way, as I mentioned before, to add a little bit of, uh, like, organic deformation to the whole thing. One of the main issues with 3D is that every now and then when we create things, they look way too perfect, too, like, CG, too computer generated. So by adding this, as you can see, we can create a very, very, like, interesting complexity that will be impossible to do from the, from the beginning. So there we go. In this video, we just learned soft selection. We just learned how to use this spiral tool, how to extract faces and, and use a primitive to create a more complex shape. And the, again, what I wanted to share or, or show with you with this is how we can create really, really complex elements with very simple shapes. So I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. And in the next one, we're going to continue working on the remaining parts of the hammer. So hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one.